and welcome to this short screencast about anchor papers and how they can help you help your students improve their writing. First of all, what are anchor papers? Anchor papers are most often actual student work samples that are used to help calibrate scoring to various levels of performance. I first encountered anchor papers as part of a scoring team for our district-wide writing assessment. I was sitting at a desk surrounded by stacks and stacks of student essays. To get calibrated so that each teacher assigns the same score to the same level of student performance, we used actual student papers representing scores ranging from zero off topic to six above excellent. We also used rubrics which can help but are somewhat subject to interpretation. Anchor papers provide context and a concrete example of the level of student performance. So how can anchor papers help students? While anchor papers help teachers stay on track and consistent with their grading, they can also help students see the difference between various levels of their own performance. Many teachers use anchor papers to demonstrate the common pitfalls in certain writing assignments. Using actual student papers as communication tools can help students see a variety of ways to interpret a specific writing prompt. Using anchor papers as samples helps the slow to start student as well as the whole to part student envision what the final product should look like. In many cases, this can help lower anxiety and help nervous students get started. So where do you find anchor papers? Well, you can locate exemplars for a variety of standardized writing tests on the internet. I've found the easiest source of anchor papers is my students themselves. When I create a writing assignment and then evaluate my students' submission, I keep a close eye for papers that are particularly well written. Then I ask those students for permission to share their work. Every time I use that prompt in the future, I have anchor papers to help my students better understand the assignment. Here are some tips for using anchor papers successfully. Number one, use positive examples. While I have tried using anchor papers as negative examples, I found greater success with using positive examples and have noticed a dramatic increase in submission quality when I provide them. Number two, share the papers anonymously. I avoid sharing the name of the writer to reduce the distraction caused when students know the author and or any bias based on gender or ethnic origin. Number three, use mainstream examples. Since my goal is to guide students' understanding towards what they should be striving for with the specific assignment, I try to avoid the extra creative anchor paper as they can be confusing. Don't get me wrong, I love to read an essay about Shakespeare written in rhyme, but the idea of that would intimidate most students before they even start. Finally, let's take a look at some real examples of anchor papers in this class. First, open the Assess tab and then select Assignments. We've provided two anchor papers for almost every assignment, so you'll have the opportunity to see what using them is like from the student perspective. These papers are actual submissions from previous classes and will help you see what a specific submission might look like. After reading the assignment directions, choose an attached anchor paper to view. Often reading an anchor paper creates an aha moment where the goals of the assignment become clear. Seeing a final version can also help answer formatting, structure, and length questions. For this assignment in Tier 2, we've asked that you quote directly from Canterbury Tales to provide your character analysis with some evidence. Formatting and punctuating quotations can be a real challenge, so seeing a finished product can be really helpful. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll try using anchor papers with your students soon.